Hello and welcome to Matt's Garden Life. This is a fun little side project for me that I work on in my spare time. I've been propagating figs and other plants now for several years and I'm always looking for the best practices when it comes to gardening and propagation. For me personally with figs it's important for me to be efficient and have a high success rate. I've tried many different methods of rooting cuttings and there are many good ways to do it. You can just cut a branch while it's dormant and stick it in the ground. It might root and grow a new tree when it warms up. For me, using what's called the fig pop method is the best practice at this point. It was developed by someone way before I became interested in rooting cuttings. And I like it because it's fairly fast to set up, it has a high success rate, doesn't require much extra care prior to up potting. The main upside for me though is that you can root many cuttings in a small area. And I'm going to show you how to take a small stick and get it to grow into a beautiful, fruitful tree. Make sure you wash and dry your cuttings before potting them up. I like to use two sides of the sink. One side has water and a splash of bleach. The other side's just water to rinse, and then I let them air dry. First, I start with a light and well-draining soil mix. I use roughly a 50-50 peat and perlite mix. Coconut core would work fine as a peat substitute, although I've never used it. I don't measure things out, and I err on the side of more perlite than peat. As I'm mixing, I'll stop and break up the small chunks. I use mostly a pump sprayer to deliver water evenly while mixing to get the mixture just damp. You should be able to squeeze the soil in your hand and not get any drops of water. Damp to the touch is what you're going for, and it's best to err on the side of a little too dry, then it's easy to add water later if needed. Alright, once you have your soil mixed, it's time to make your bags. The bags that I use are 4 inch by 16 inch Plymore bags that I ordered off of Amazon. And while bagging the soil, I'll check the moisture periodically by squeezing it as far as I can. Make sure it's not too wet. I use a section of 2 inch PVC pipe in this video, cut at an angle on both ends to fill the bags. The PVC pipe makes an excellent scoop for the soil. I've seen other people in other videos use a plastic cup with the bottom cut out instead of the PVC pipe. I will use the scoop to pack the soil tightly in the bag, and I'll also squeeze the bag at the end to compact the soil further. I'll fill as many bags as I have cuttings at this point. To prepare your cuttings, lay them out and using a sharp blade, I scrape a section on two sides of the lower part of the cutting. None of these steps are necessary, although I do this to speed up the process and get rooted fig trees faster. Wherever there is damage to the cutting, it will scab over and push roots through. Here's a pic of a cutting that I rooted and later washed the soil away just to demonstrate how the roots grow out of the scarred area on the sides. This next step is also optional. I'll apply a generous amount of rooting gel with a small paintbrush. I paint it onto the scraped areas as well as the cut portion at the bottom of the cutting. I find that roots will dominantly push out of these scarred and cut areas of each scion. Next it's time to put the cuttings in the bags of soil that were prepared. I push the cutting in just past these scraped areas. I'll gently push the soil down around the cutting and then use a rubber band around the top on the outside of the bag creating a tight seal against the cutting. I then loop the rubber band around the bottom of the bag to secure it. They're easy to remove if you need to add water later or use some sort of solution to fight fungus gnats. I use a white paint marker to mark the bags. This season I made a list and numbered each fig cutting type. That way I can mark each bag with the corresponding number instead of having to write out the whole name on each bag. Place each bag on top of a heating mat in the bottom of a plastic bin and set the temperature from 75 to 80 degrees. I'll push a temperature probe through one of the bags that's situated in the middle of the heating mat. I modified the lid of the bin to allow airflow and keep the gnats out. I cut a large hole in most of the lid and used some hot glue to fix a piece of mesh over the hole. This allows the humidity to stabilize and keep the gnats out for a little while. I also fix some LED lights on the inside of the lid to use when the cuttings start to leaf out. 
There is a period where they're leafing out, but they're not ready to be outside in the sun just yet. All right, that's the basics of setting up your fig pops. Thanks for watching and happy rooting. And if you feel like sticking around for some extra advice or just enjoy the smooth jazz sounds of my voice, I have a few questions I wanted to address that I routinely get. Air holes in the bags. I did put air holes in the bags the first time I tried this method, and I learned that it's just a better way for the fungus gnats to lay their eggs in the soil, allowing their larvae to feast on the newly formed roots. This is where the moisture level is crucial, and since there are no holes in these bags, the least amount of moisture is very important. The soil will feel barely damp at all, and it will seem like it's not enough moisture for a growing plant. When the bags are placed on the heating mat, they will sweat, and you will see the moisture in the bag come to the surface of the soil. There is plenty of water for the cutting because the bags are closed and don't allow for moisture to escape. Later on, when the cuttings are rooting and have leaves, you will need to add some water because the plant is using it up. You'll notice the bags become lighter in weight and also lighter in color as the soil dries out. You can add water in a few ways. You can use a sprayer from the top after loosening up the rubber band, or now you can poke holes in the bottom and dip them into a basin of water. I prefer the bottom watering method because once the holes are in there, it's a faster way to get water to the roots. Another question I get is wrapping the cuttings in parafilm. I learned early on that parafilm is not necessary using this method. It takes way too much time. It can lead to mold growing between the film and the cutting also. And because the bags are long, they offer some protection to the cutting from drying out. And I'm in Arizona, so if the cuttings were going to be drying out, they would definitely be doing it here. One of the other issues I've run into is mold. Sometimes you will get a little bit of mold that forms around the top of the cutting where the bag is against it. If I catch this, I can remediate it using a copper-based fungicide that you can find at garden stores or any of the big box places in the garden center. One little spray and it will take care of any mold issues you have. When up potting, be careful not to disturb the roots too much. I cut down the side of the bag when I'm taking the, them out of the bags and I usually will up pot into a 14 inch by 4 inch tree pot. I use a general purpose potting soil. I'll mix in some perlite to lighten it up and a, maybe a little bit of compost and some biochar. I seat them in there at the same level they were rooted in the bag and I'll pack the soil down and water them generously with a little bit of B1 mixed in the water to protect the roots. All right, this is the real end of the video, and if you have any questions or you want to order some custom engraved tree tags that were featured in this video, you can email me. I'll usually have cuttings for sale from January to the end of February. You can also email me for an updated list of which cuttings I have, and I'll get you a good deal. Thanks for watching.